Hello, Turk. You here? I am here. He is here. My network, my last networking call was really good, and I had to. I was like, Turk can wait. I'll be there in a minute. <laughs> oh man. Oh, you're not showing your 14 and a half inch trophies behind you. Uh, that's because I'm not in my my lab, nor did I bring them home and put them on my <laughs> table behind me. <laughs> Listen, they're just gathering dust there. I, mean, I don't. I don't have to. I could just go up a little bit and show star numbers, but we're. We'll oh, okay. that along. Yeah, I I decided to wear the crew neck today. I'm feeling comfy. At home. You look good. You look good. Um, yeah. I guess we just wait a few minutes. Oh, yeah. I should stir that. I should pull it up. Yeah. Why don't we go ahead and launch that so then we minimize our faces because heaven knows. <laughs> um. Okay. Let's make this the other screen. You present. Wonderful. Well, that's interesting. Somebody is looking to pick up some uh, IHSCA swag because they like the logo. You know what? I was thinking the same thing the other day. I I want to text Darren and just say, make an IHSCA jersey. It'd be cool. Do that. I would. Yeah. I would have one. Well, you'd have one like so for like, or like the TOs or the people that are working the tournaments or whatever the case is can walk around in staff shirts like polo, yes. like like IHSCA polos and stuff like that, nice. or even a jersey Always would be polo. cool. I want any. I want. The, I could I do a jersey. Jersey's fine. I love jerseys. Get a big IHSCA logo on the front, kind of like the Capitals have, like the Superman thing. Yeah, whatever. Would love that. It would work well. I think well, we're gonna have a good amount of people here. I'm excited. I think so. Time. Yeah, I, I see we got uh, up to nine, nine viewers. Yep. So that's good. So welcome everybody. We're gonna kick off here in about a minute. Uh, this uh, this should go a little bit uh, technologically smoother. Yes, so. this one will be better. <laughs> Uh, well, and you know what's funny is Coach Rakowskis messaged me two minutes after we hung up the stream, and he said, it works now. Dot, dot, oh, dot. no. Usually sometimes it's just give it, close it, reopen it, make it. We, just, we tried. The good old reset everything. button. We tried everything. Yep. It just didn't work. But, no, I'm excited. I've got my strawberry banana body armor, and I'm ready to go. I uh, do not have <laughs> any sort of thing to, to flex there. Uh, that's all good. So kind of taking a look at some of the, the people we got in our thing. I see uh, we've got eSports coach from Hindale, Cent Hinsdale Central just down the road from me. So that's awesome. I just got a chance represent, to talk with him. Represent the uh, Western suburbs. Very cool. Uh, McKinley Park. Awesome. So welcome, guys. Uh, and we'll go over our intros here. Actually, Del and I see 130. So I see 130. We can let's, go ahead and get started. Let's, let's kick this thing. So I know we've got our intro slides uh, to talk about who we are. Did, you know what? It, what I, I was thinking about this would be kind of cool. How about I introduce you and you introduce me? Oh, God. Okay. Well, hello, everybody, welcome to the broadcast. Uh, my friend here is Coach Chris Terpstra. You can see his wonderful face on the slide. Um, he is a special education teacher at Naperville North High School. He is the general manager of esports there as well. He has been their Overwatch coach for some time. He just took over as general manager there. Um, and he is a tournament organizer for the IHSEA. He will be running the Overwatch, Valorant, and League of Legends, question marks, we'll see, seasons this year. Um, I had to think opposite of what I'm doing. Right. Um, his contact information is there, so if you guys want to get a hold of him, that is the best way to do so. Um, but he has been a Husky and has led uh, Naperville North to three consecutive Overwatch state titles um, and uh, strong finishes at Nationals for NASIF the last two years as well with second and third, I believe. Yep. Um, and so that is Coach Terpstra. Let's, okay, here we go. Awesome, yeah. And then we've got uh, Coach McGee here, Dalton McGee, uh, otherwise known as Wrigley. Um, he is uh, comes to us as a biology teacher. Um, he works down in the Springfield Public School District, in particular the Lamphere High School for, for his science class. But he is the director of esports as they have like a conglomerate where they combine some of their high schools to make a, an entire Springfield group. Um, he is also a fellow uh, tournament organizer, works with me hand in hand. We're kind of splitting duties this upcoming year. Um, right now we're taking three apiece, but man, we would love to get some extra help. We can drop that line a couple of times if uh, people are looking <laughs> to get involved. We would love to have have more TOs coming in. Um, and then he is also a, a NASEF Scholastic Fellow. His contact information again is there, written below. Um, flexing his, uh, I, I don't, I, I can come up with my jersey. There's my my North jersey, but you know uh, he's got his out in his picture. I've got so, the swag. So, I, I, yeah, I, I know. I wanted good. to show off more than one thing, you know. I got yes, the hat too. Because you are certainly more than one thing, Dalton. <laughs> Let's move on. All right, you start. All right, exactly. So where do we start? So 
you know, you're coming into your program, whether you're, you're brand new or you're, you're kicking, you know, and you're, you're trying to figure out what is it that I need to do? Well, there's absolutely zero doubt in my mind that this year in particular, students are going to come back hungrier than ever wanting to get involved with activities. Um, I've had already several messages for, in the off season from some of my people about when are tryouts going to happen? What's the season's going to look like? When are, when are practices? How are the clubs going to work? Just questions, 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 which is awesome, because but it's, it's more than what it's been. And I think, again, because we hadn't had a full structured, you know, an entire year of, of possible uh, returning to, to play for two years now, um, that I think there's going to be a lot of interest there. So, uh, you know, you're going to have, I think, an increase in numbers or at least a higher level of interest when it comes to that. And, you know, because of that, you know, we got to get we got to get going early. And that's where everything starts with those tryouts, right? It's like uh, we got to form up these teams. We got to get, start, get our rosters ready, especially if we're going to be interested in the competitive season. Now, you may look at your calendar and say, well, OK, so a lot of our competitive seasons, yes, they start the first week of October. But in reality, when school kicks off, whether you start in, in mid to late August or you start in September, if you're with the CPS and stuff like that, that really only gives you about a, a month to get all your tryouts done, get your roster set, get some practices in, especially for those fall sports. Um, doesn't give you a, a ton of time. So you know, you're thinking, oh, I got I got plenty of time. You know, it's only you know July 28th. I'm good. It 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 will be the seasons will be starting before we know it. And, and time does fly with that. So we always recommend is kind of start that process as quickly as you can. You know, right out of the gate, um, you know, for example, my, myself, I've got our first big club meeting is going to be September 1st. So about a week after we start school and I'm starting uh, tryouts that that upcoming weekend. And we're just going to roll for a bunch of weeks in a row. Um, Dalton, what, what do you got? Where, where do you guys start? It's like, how early are you guys kicking off your, yeah, your so stuff? We have our first tryout. We do six days in a row, one game a day uh, to try to spread it out and let coaches not have to do multiple things a day. But we start August 30th. And we'll do Monday through Saturday with Sunday for callbacks um, and extra time we need to see with anyone interviewing captains, anything like that. So we take a week starting August 30th to do ours. Um, yep. and, and we're going to talk about that a lot more, yep. like why we choose dates, what dates we choose. Um, but I think to your point of the, the hunger for normalcy, it's sometimes difficult to realize how long COVID has been going on. And because of the time that it happened with school years, this will be the first normal IHSEA season in three years. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Because one ended, one was entirely, and finally here we are. So this is an opportunity for, for growth, for your kids to be excite, excited, and for you to harness that excitement. Because while they're excited, they'll turn things in on time. So <laughs> let's yes. go to that slide. We, we certainly what hope are they so. Turning in? Yeah. So before we move, I did want to mention, though, um, you know, some of what we should have done in the beginning. Um, a lot of our stuff, as far as what we're going to cover, yeah, we've got our slides, but we actually have a very limited number of slides because a lot of this we want it to be, I, I, we could say, participant driven. So uh, jump in that chat, jump in the Q&A, drop us some questions, drop us, you know, some things that you guys do when we print it to the, the stuff that we're covering um, that you may want to pass on because certainly what works for us may not work. You know, every club is going to be its own entity. And because of that, you, you you want to use maybe suggestions and, and see what's worked, what hasn't worked for others. But in the end of the day, you're going to make the decisions for your club. So you got to kind of figure that stuff out. So we're going to just really what this is about is just kind of like, okay, here's some things we do. Here's some advice. But beyond that level, um, you know, any input you guys can give uh, questions that's really going to drive th this session uh, to, to what and, and fulfill it to what you guys are looking for. So, all right. right so because at the end of the day, this conference is all about helping the community grow enabling you guys to be as successful as possible. This is not us just saying, Hey, we're doing well. And we want to tell you about it. You know, if we want to direct those, those suggestions to your needs and just because, you know, Springfield is three schools, Naperville North is one big school. Um, we didn't have this size program forever either. And we're close with a lot of coaches that have different programs than ours. So whatever would best help you, please speak up and say that. Uh, and we would love to talk about your guys' needs, hopes, just dreams, desires, blah, blah, blah. All okay. Preseason interest form. Speaking of things that turn in on time. Um, so when you guys are meeting these kids, um, we, we keep saying your program is going to have its own identity. Your program is going to have its own needs. This is where you find out what that is. OK, you can put an array of things on here. You can talk to your uh, athletic director or your administration, get their input on what they think that you should be uh, you know, collecting here, whatever works for you guys. But what you must have at the core of these interest forms is knowing how many students there are, what games they want and contact information. OK, because you're going to need all that. And once you get an idea of 
what games they're interested in playing. Do they want to play these three competitive games, but just have fun with these games? Then you can start to figure out that tryout schedule, which we're going to get to in a little bit. And you can make sure that you're putting the effort and the resources you have where they will best be used. And this interest form, when we say those tryouts need to happen soon, particularly because Overwatch and Rocket League are coming up in, in October, this interest form is something you could probably get on Google Forms and write today. I mean, this is something that needs to get out there and needs to be available in as many places as you can get it, whether it's Discord, your school website, sending out emails, Google, uh, like Google Classroom, whatever it is you're using, this needs to get out quickly because there are going to be our procrastinating champions. And the ones that are really interested, you'll start to see some numbers. It might help you guide decision making on the process, uh, but you want to have these done well before tryouts so you can then structure tryouts well. Yep. So uh, a preseason form, like he was talking about, I, I use a, I use a Google form for mine. I'm able to get it out there um, because with you know the, the you're you're just collecting information from your students. You're not sharing it outside your own school, so you don't have to worry about all the the the, the, the SOPA stuff and, and things that come from that. But um, the big the bigger ones that he was talking get get that contact information on whatever platform that you're using. Um, sometimes it's just a school email address because uh, some schools can't use Discord. Sometimes it's your Discord tag. Whatever it is, make sure you're collecting that information because there's nothing worse than than somebody filling out a form and you have no idea who the heck it is. It's like, I'd love to contact you. Um, so, so one thing inside Google Forms is great is turn on that automatically collect email address thing. Even if it's not a school email address, at least you've got some sort of contact information that you can get back and say, hey, I don't know who you are. You didn't leave any other contact information. Let me know where you are and we'd love to talk and stuff like that. Um, as, as Coach Dalton said, you know, getting those numbers down, you're going to know, you know, hey, do I, how much, what kind of staffing do I need or how many seasons am I looking at covering, you know, because if I've only got, you know, two kids, like in Mike's situation, I didn't have a lot of Fortnite interest. I know I don't have to go crazy on my Fortnite tryouts because there's only a couple of students that want to do it. But if I've got, you know, 20 plus kids in Overwatch, okay, now I need to have this tryout system set up and ready to go. So this, this kind of gives you that, that, that heads up as far as, hey, how much more work beyond just this preseason interest form do I need to do? It's, it's a good way to get some of that info going. Oh. So All right. Let's go ahead. And speaking of that, trying to use those resources, Coach Terp, you're the one that kind of gave me my good new uh, mentality <laughs> about this over Lou Malnati. So I'm yeah. going to let you start on this one. That's right. So the one thing that that always happens, and especially in these pre-interest forms, is you're going to get, if, 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 if the kids are honest, you're going to get just a 30 to 40 game list of everything in the world that they're interested in from games that are, are that yes, we play competitively in state, some that we play for fun, and some that you're like, uh, no, probably can't do something like that due to graphics or whatever the case is. So just, just so everybody understands that within the IHSCA competitive season, we are um, only playing competitive games that are rated um, teen and below. Um, obviously there's been some asks and some push for, for things that have been in the, in the MA range and the maturity stuff, but uh, that is not something that IHSCA anytime is going to go to. Um, we understand that the collegiate level has some of those titles and depending on if those titles stay long enough, there may be some push and pull as far as that getting that down to the high school. But for current, this upcoming season, we're going to be a teen and rated only below. So in, in, again, I don't think we've got on any slide until maybe later, but, um, the games we've got, we've got coming. Um, should we talk about that now, real quick, Dalton? Uh, yeah, I can jump to that. Just yeah, just you we know we can always slide back. But uh, the idea here is we've got our fall games, and we'll we'll talk about those stats later. But the fall games for us uh, for the IHSC is Overwatch and Rocket League. That'll start in October and go through until winter break. Just before winter break, we finish up. Then in the winter months, so January, February, will be Super Smash and League of Legends. Uh, Smash will be some Invitationals. League of Legends will be a shortened, condensed season. And then starting in March-ish, I think early March, is going to be uh, fall, or spring seasons of Fortnite and Valorant. So that's how those six are lining up. So we can go we can go back. I just wanted to hit the six titles so people understood when I was saying so many games. Those are the six that um, the IHSCA will have competitive seasons for. We do occasionally have events within either those six games where it's like different game modes or, um, you know, I know, uh, Coach McGee, you, you've put together Among Us events. Um, you had your E-Olympics. So there's there's a lot of other opportunities outside of those six games that we can provide for students to uh, to play. Um, but we'll see uh, where that, that all goes. Um, but those are the six that we've got. Uh, question real popped up real quick. League, league, league season, not invitations like last year. We're not sure how the legality of it's going to work out. Um, right now, that's kind of the plan is to run it with those weekends again. In, Fe in January, February, um, to do it like we did this last year, because we don't know if 
we don't think things have become more restrictive. We've, we're hoping that they're not, but it's probably going to be those invitationals where then the, the winners of those fed into a overall invitational for a state state champion. Um, so, I, Coach Eck, I would probably say it'd be very similar to last year, but we'll keep you guys posted definitely on Lee because that's a, always a flowing and changing conversation at any time. And if I can um, jump in about the yeah. games thing too, especially in, in Springfield at least, the game I hear more than anything that's not one of our six is Rainbow Six Siege, mm-hmm. and 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 we get it; it's extremely popular as an esport. It is rated M. Um, so what I would suggest if you have kids knocking down your door about Rainbow Six or CS:GO or whatever the case may be, Call of Duty is a big one that you hear a lot of times. Um, if your administration is fine supporting the club atmosphere of that, you can let them play together. You can let that drive the community. You can have their parents sign their permission forms. Admin, you know, in Springfield, we believe that it's parents' responsibility to decide what opportunities their kids are getting, not the schools to limit that. And so the school is going to provide it. Not every school is like that. Um, and so that's okay. And, and again, it's going to be the identity of your program. Um, but you talk to your admin, ask them. Um, I'm going to talk about that later today and in, in the club thing uh, presentation. I have a three. Um, but it let, give them the opportunity they can take if you can give it to them. And yeah. if not, tell them. And I think that's part of the deal. Like we're, we're always happy to support students in whatever realm that we can. Exactly. If you're, if your club base wants to form a team of a game that's not competitive, but there's, there's all, there's so many tournaments, so many opportunities out there that they can enter in it. That's not necessarily in the IHSEA, but they can go play at a different platform and stuff like that. And it's still school-based and stuff like that. So those, there, there's lots of opportunities for the games that aren't covered through us. We don't want to diminish that at all. But we just want to make you, uh, that we choose the ones that are one that we can play uh, okay with parent permission. Then usually, and then it's the ones that are the most popular. So those are the six that that we're running. Um, again, only two at a time throughout the year. Obviously, when you're practicing, so the the, for the fall season's going. You're probably practicing for your winter and spring sports. At least doing you know a little bit of scrim here and there. We'll talk about that too. Um, but things are going to overlap a little bit. So don't it, as for yourself when it says don't do too much. You know, you as a, as a sponsor, if you're the only staff covering for a club, which I know, God bless you if that's the case, um, you got to think about you've got teams in competitive season, then you've got practices. There's a lot of stuff going on, which, again, get this tryouts done, get it out of the way so you can get to that, that regular schedule. Everybody likes a stable schedule of being able to know what's coming up in a week. So that kind of thing. So we've got our, our example of time commitments, right? You've got your tryouts, your practices. On match day, even though you're 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 not playing, you know you're staff, you're staff member, you're just sitting there watching, or whatever the case is. We love the IHSCA um, uh, coaches and and school admin, or whatever it is, to be available in case there is an issue that we need to reach out for, whether it be a team's not showing up or there's a, a conflict that occurs or something like that that we need to get a hold of of an adult. Though. So that's always a good thing that we you're, you're at least available for match days. And then again, if your team has a, a lab at school. You know, you got to have you got to have supervision, right? You got to be there. So that's a lot of time commitment when it comes to these competitive teams. So while there are six games available, I know myself, I would never be able to cover all six. You know, I have I've got a couple other staff members. I know, Coach McGee, you definitely have a, a rate, wide range of coaches, even more so than I have for your game. So that definitely alleviates some of the amount of time that you have to do. If you don't have that kind of access to staff, you really got to think about limiting your tryouts as far as which ones you can cover, what seasons you can cover, and that kind of stuff. Because, you know, you you, you have trials for teams, all of a sudden that team can't perform because you don't have a, a staff support to it. So keep and that all guys, in mind. If you if you can hold me just for a second, let me show you um, yeah. what, we're ta- what we're talking about here. Oops, see if it's going to let me uh, exit full screen. Yep. Um, I want to I show you guys, if we go to our uh, District 186 website, um for Springfield I'm going to go to schools and then we go to athletics and esports and schedule so um this is what it will look like if you are not choosing what you can do um as we approach oh, of course it's loading okay so as we August we start our trials as I mentioned here's where we're starting practice here's where the regular season starts you can see this is a loaded calendar okay so I made them I bring this up cuz I made the mistake of thinking I could do all of it. I was like, oh, I'm not married. I don't have kids. I'm 24. I can do all of it. No, because if you go through these months and you see that it doesn't stop ever, it's full year. You, have to, you start you start to realize, make sure that you're, you know, you're doing what you can, but not burning yourself out either. Because yeah. if you're falling down because of overcommitment, it will also affect your kids and your program. Right. So just recognize this is a lot. And so make sure you have the support from other staff 
or are you realistically set goals and and, and what you can do? And and I, I get like where that's more like a coaching kind of aspect we're talking about, but it, it falls into the tryouts because you, you you're not going to go through the process of holding a tryout if you can't cover a game. So figure out what it is that you can cover, figure out what you get out of your student interest form and, and kind of put those two pieces together. That will lend you to say, hey, I'm not I'm not trying to do too much as it were. All right, let's hit that next one. OK, so speaking of that, talk about your tryout schedule. Uh, who has to be at every single tryout? You do. So it means you need to be the one that's setting it. You need to set it ahead of time so that they know when to make adjustments. Anybody that has work is going to be. Uh, be able to I, I saw that i tried not to break but i saw it i mean mine's walking behind me i already got one so i'm good yes <laughs> i'm good <laughs> so there's that i have a very very nice cat listen yeah um so but in, in any case you let them know well ahead of time at least more than three weeks ahead of time if you can because that's where you start to get into the work schedule problem right you don't want to tell your kids hey next week we're holding tryouts they might be working a lot of my kids work so make sure three weeks ahead of time, you said, this is when we're going to try out and it needs to match your schedule because you're the one that needs to be there with that much head uh, heads up time. They will make it work. OK, yep. if you have only one person, how many staff members are there? You know, you got to be at all of them. I don't know anything about League of Legends and I'm blessed to have a really good League of Legends coach. So do I have to be at that night? I probably will be to meet the kids, but he has to. So he needs to know that availability. You got to say, when can you be there? When can you be there? Get it all together and put it out there. A month ahead of time, no one will have any issue getting there whatsoever. Um, it says some games will take more than one day. This is why Coach Terpstra and I do this a little differently. We have all six days in a row of different games, and then we have a built-in callbacks day afterwards. Callbacks are kind of a thing that I, I stole from the theater community. I do a lot of community theater. Um, it's a chance to see another, like another opportunity to see a student, right? It's not necessarily a cut. It just might be that with 50 kids trying out for a game, you have no way of getting to really see all of them. So you have an opportunity if you need it. Or, you know, you could have a, a real 50-50 shot on who you're going with for a last spot on a team. Put them through a couple extra, you know, tryouts. Um, whatever needs to happen needs to happen. Just recognize that the bigger pools of players you'll have, the more likely it is you'll need more time to get through them. Fortnite is our big problem. Yep. And then I know Overwatch is yours. So yep. you can speak to that a little yeah. bit. So, so, you know, for us, the online or in person, I run, so I've got it split up. I got four weeks in a row, instead of doing all the days in a row, just because I have to cover a lot of this, um, this, this year, um, myself. So I set up a schedule where I'm doing one game a week and I've got tryouts on Wednesday and tryouts on Saturday. Um, I'm leaving the option with everything that's been going on to having it online or in person. I'm encouraging the in person. I would love to have them come to my lab. And that's something you got to think about too. Like how, how capable is your lab of getting enough people in there um, and, and, and stuff? How many kids do you have interested? Is it worth doing the in person or is it just better to run online? You do lose a bit of that personal uh, touch when you start running everything online because then it's just your voice coming through Discord or whatever it is. Um, or just you typing out a message or something like that. So I highly encourage to get as much in person with, especially with tryouts and your club and involvement, especially if you're you're newer, get that going early. It really builds that rapport. Um, try not to rely on the online stuff too much. It's there to help. So, for example, I do um, my the Wednesday one, the Wednesday night one is all online because the kids have already left school. Uh, we put it at, at, at seven o'clock at night because that gives the those kids that, that have other stuff going on or homework, whatever, it gets it all done and out of the way. And then they have seven to nine. We can do those tryouts. But then on Saturday, that's where I run my in-person one. I figure you're, you're, you should be available. You're going to come back. That's a multiple day kind of thing. So you can see kind of the differences between myself and Coach McGee is how we run those things. Um, I do, uh, you know, we have we have definitely have, you want to call it callbacks. I My problem is always, you know, JV varsity, you know, because we'll, we have enough student interest usually on our games where we have two levels, and a lot of our games in the IHSCA support that. So it's just it's, it's usually determining on, hey, who's my varsity squad, who's my JV squad. And some of it's clear cut, but then you get to that last roster spot and you're like, well, which one of these do I put to varsity and which one do I not? And that kind of stuff. But, um, and then I play Brigida and that answers the question. Well, yeah, don't have to worry about it. Yes. Um, so the, but the, get that schedule again. We I, 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 you know, you get that broken record, you know, get that schedule done as soon as the earlier you get this stuff done. And obviously, you know, Coach McGinn and I were horrible at procrastinating because I don't know how. We didn't get this whole presentation done until recently. <laughs> We're bad examples. Don't follow that example. That's true, but our but, schedule has been on but, the site. Yes, your schedule has been great. And so is, mine's up. We don't have a student released yet, but I've got it ready to go. So getting that stuff done ahead of time is going to be a huge thing. Um, That's question. a great question from That's Coach a great Coach Rack. Thank you. So how do you balance minimizing inclusion with cutting kids from the team? So 
I make it perfectly obvious when I start going that I want all kids to come out. I, I you know, I work within special education. A lot of the kids in special education know me, and they're like, "Hey, I want to play video games." I'm like, "Dude, come out for tryouts. C come see what you're interested in." I've had a couple of kids that have made my Smash. Not necessarily the team, but they come up for the Smash Cup and they and they play a little bit, and then, then they are involved for that year because they have that uh, that that welcome part of it. Um, I, I will say, I myself, I haven't had a, a big issue with inclusion because I've got females, I've got minority, I've got everything on all of our teams. It's 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 awesome the way that Naperville North has lined up. As a matter of fact, we're like poster child for the NA, NA, NASEF uh, media because yeah. of how how diverse our crew is. Um, but I make it clear, like I was just trying to say, I make it clear when I start off that I, 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 it's all based off skill. It's literally, I pretend I don't see you and I'm just watching you perform, right? I'm just seeing your character on a screen. And I think that's one of the coolest part about esports. It doesn't matter your your you know, your, your, your sexual orientation. It doesn't matter your race. It doesn't matter anything. That stuff doesn't make any difference. It's just how do you perform in the game? That's what I'm looking at. How does your communication come across and, and things like that? And we'll talk a little bit more about that in the tryouts, but... Um, yeah, the balancing it's, it, I get it. It's, it's tough because you're like, you've got, you get, uh, let's say you get some females that come try out and none of them are particularly high skilled. Well, I definitely want to try to get some of that in on the JV squad to, 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 to get them learning and stuff like that. I don't want to just cut them all together. Um, because you want to have some of that inclusion based, uh, you know, kind of situation. But at the same point, I, again, I, I, I make it perfectly clear. Everything is off of skill. And, and how a team will be successful as any high school sport, right? That's it wouldn't matter what uh, game we're playing or what we're doing. That's how that should be. Uh, yeah, coach, you want like to I would that, add yeah. on to that. And I'm going to talk about this later. And this is literally rack. We could talk about this for hours. And that's why there's an entire presentation at three about the club environment. So unlike football, where if there's too many and you try out and you get cut, you just don't play a big thing. And we can do an esports is offer that club environment. Right. So we tell people like Coach Terp said, you know, we're going to take this number. We're going to have that be our competitive team. Everyone else, please stay with us. Be part of the club. Get a cool T-shirt. OK, be part of essentially our farm system. We'll work with you in weekly practice, weekly club events. Uh, and again, I'm fortunate that I have the staff size and the administrative support to enable that. And I recognize that can be difficult in some places. But regardless of what it looks like, the way to make sure inclusion is still recognized, especially with that great talk we had last night as our closing keynote. And she's talking about, you know, the things that go into why they're not as successful during tryouts. Uh, they still need a space to be. And, and this is, you know, what, regardless of what factor is affecting the inclusion, um, we need a safety net for esports uh -huh. underneath those tryouts. And other sports don't have that. And it's one of the things I love about esports. Make sure you provide a safety net, whether it is a club meeting once a week, getting together and playing, whether it's, you know, a resources folder of all the ways they could improve and you make that available to them. Whatever it is that works best for your program, make sure you have some kind of safety net so they still feel there is a spot for me, even if it's not on that top competitive team. Yep. Absolutely. I've got, um, I make it a point to, to, um, I have a student leadership team. So I know you're talking, you, you have your captain's talk at some point or you already did. I forget. Is yeah. Yesterday? So we, it's our executive. Oh yeah. The captain's talk was yesterday. Captain's yeah. talk yesterday. But I make it a point that as far as my student leadership within my club is that that is where I get a lot of my inclusion from, because I want to get perspectives from the whole student body. I just don't want it from one little section. So uh, that is where I do a lot of my inclusion stuff is, is it, even if the kid's not on, um, on a, on a, on a competitive team, I want that input because that, that portion of the school I want represented in, in all of that stuff. We had another question from Katie. Uh, do you keep the same students all year round or, or, or all season, or do you, are they able to join later? So for my club versus the competitive teams, so you kind of kind of have to differentiate the two, right? We've got the esports club and within them, you have the sub level, excuse me, of competitive teams. The club is open year round. You can join at any time. And it's, it's literally, I make it so it's a year worth. So, um, you know, they pay whatever it is to join and then they can come and use the lab for free for the entire year. Any of our events, it's all included, that kind of stuff. So that's just the club, the club stuff. Then we have the competitive side. So once rosters have to get turned in, those teams are set. So I've had, I've had students come to me in like winter and spring talking about Overwatch. And I'm like, awesome, great. Here's my 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 um, students that were involved last, last season. They're practicing. You want to get in on that. You want to talk to them. You want to you know, ham it up with them. That's awesome. Get involved with that community. And then, hey, here's my tryouts or here's what's going to happen for the next season. So they're aware of it. Just as open as you can, as as forth with with information as you can, is going to go a long way. Um, I get more more so, I guess, with my kids with the special. You get a lot of parent emails asking, hey, my student is really interested in doing this. 
respond quickly, respond as open as you can, let them know everything that's going on. They really do appreciate that. But at the end of the day, it's similar to football. You're not trying out in February. Yeah. You know? So yeah. For, so for the it's, it's whatever your program's focus is. Like I said, we love having that safety net. So no matter what the time is, no matter what the reason is, you can have their involvement. Uh, but as far as the competitive teams, logistically, it would be a nightmare to try to have tryouts all the time, add somebody later. It just doesn't work. And rosters are due at a certain point. So after yep. that, you're going to go ahead and move on. I think we should go because we have a, yep. a yep. little under 20 minutes left. This is, but this is great. The good questions, yeah. everyone. Keep, 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 questions, keep them guys. coming. Keep them coming. Absolutely. All right. Um, you want to go ahead, Dalton? Uh, I'm going to let you start on this okay, one. Okay, right. you, right. you preach yeah. on this one. So anyway. this is where this is the the trap that a lot of of GMs, if you want, coach head coaches, whatever, you fall into is they don't know anything about a specific game. They they have they they know the title. They maybe know a little bit about the game, and that's it, right? That's that's all that's all they've got. And then comes tryout time. So you get a you do your preseason interest form. You get a lot of interest in a game that you're not familiar with. You want to hold tryouts, and then you're just like. What am I going to do? Well, we'll talk about the game specific stuff here in a minute. But, you know, in the end of the day, you know, yes, we understand those kids. They've got higher game knowledge, more game skill, other kind of stuff. But it, you have to make it clear as the adult within the room that you have the final say when it comes to tryouts. You want to take the, that input. You know, that, it's valuable, especially um, from seasoned and varsity players. I use that stuff all the time. It's not something that makes me make a final decision, but it definitely gets weighed into that. You, it would be, it'd be silly to be like, look, I've got a a person that knows what they're talking about telling me, you know, giving me information, oh, why would I just disregard that? But beyond just just beyond the skill level, and this is this is something I can't I can't iterate enough, is someone that knows how to be part of a team that can communicate well and maybe is a little bit lower of a skill level and within esports, that is a coachable player. That is someone that can develop game skill later on. You get a decently high tiered skilled player, but can't talk, uh, is toxic. You know, any of these kind of things that we don't want that you're constantly having to call home about, just like, you know, a student in class, right? He's He may be great at the subject, but if he's mouthing off in class or if he's you making fun of people or, or causing issues, you know, that, that's a headache, right? It's so much easier when you've got a, a, a person that is open and, and willing to be coached. So when you're going through these tryouts and you've got that fe- you're on the fence kind of thing, keep that in mind that that coachable players, uh, that's huge. Um, but again, you've got that that final decision. Um, kind of thing. So, and then the last bullet point was, you know, look, we, we, we get it getting cut or not making a team. It's always going to be hard, right? Especially for some of these students, a lot of them, um, they're, 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 they're introverts. We're, we're not, that's what gaming is, right? We, we, we spend a lot of time in front of our screen. We don't go out and talk to a lot of people. It's awesome that the esports world can bring those people a little bit out of their shells, but because of that, you know, sometimes taking that information is going to be a little hard. Being open and honest with them is going to go a long way. Tell them what they can improve, what they can do. But again, that's all comes down to that final decision when you're deciding, Hey, who's on the roster and who's not Go ahead, Dalton. Yeah. Uh, I want to pause that real quick to mention um, X question said, do you have qu- issues doing fall tryouts for games? That aren't played until winter or spring. I want to address this in my experience with Fortnite um, because my Fortnite kids are pretty well respected as one is like the team in Springfield for four or in Illinois for Fortnite. But uh, we have our share of issues that this exact topic has, has been a part of. And, and the main thing is eligibility. And so uh, if you have a tryout where you have a Fortnite team and half of them become ineligible by Fortnite season, you have a problem. So I think that you need to go into it knowing whether they're freshmen or not is important. right? If they're freshmen and you're not sure what their grades were and you don't have any record of that, <coughs> excuse me, you need to be careful with putting those teams on varsity rosters that are way ahead of time. If they're not, you can look at what their previous grades were, and that can help you figure out whether that's going to be an issue or not. There are some personal issues that may come up, but more often than not, it's an eligibility issue that you weren't aware of that exists. So how can you make uh, do with that? We're going to get to our slide about the game-specific needs, and you're going to see roster sizes. And when we get to that, I'm going to address the rest of my thoughts on that. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to um, move us to towards that so we can yeah. get there. Um, hello. There we go. And, and that's here. So um, you can see the numbers here. Uh, the first number you see on each game is how many people start for the top varsity team. Minimum. Right? Yep, minimum, minimum number. Right. And then the second number you see is how many can fill out the rest of their bench. So if you look at Overwatch, for example, Overwatch is a 6v6 game. Okay. You can have up to five subs allowed. Um, and the reason it's five is because if you have six subs, you should just have a JV team. That's the idea. Right. You should have two teams so that they can all play as much as possible. Um if you make maximum usage of this, this is how you avoid that problem, Meg. Um, 
take Overwatch, for example. I might have uh, 15 kids that want to play Overwatch, for example. Okay, so I already know, okay, well, I have enough for a varsity and a JV team. So how do I submit my rosters? I submit only six as my varsity team. And then I submit six plus three as my JV team. Why do I do it like that? Because IHSEA roster regulations allow JV players to be called up to varsity, but not varsity players to be called down. Okay, so that's how you submit rosters to ensure that if something does happen with one of those top six, I can just call someone up. And if someone happens down here, well, that's not affecting them anyway. Okay, so that's generally how I like, I like to think about it. Um, this The caveat to that is they can't play a varsity and a JV game the same week. That's fine. Um, but but that fixes the problem. So essentially, I suggest when you figure these rosters out, you'll turn in the varsity roster for the minimum number of people required to play on that roster, list everyone else's JV to as much as the numbers can make that work, and then you can deal with the flexibility if things come up in a season that's months down right. the road. There is a little bit of, of, of leeway there. So, for example, for myself, I've always had seven on my varsity just because um, I, I always like to have that one kid that's that's maybe played JV for a while and I want to get like a senior or something like that that you want to get on varsity a little bit more time. So you have that kind of situation sometime that arises. Also, if you have, for exa your example, you were talking about, let's say you had 11 plus six. Let's say you had 17 kids interested. Well, then that's fine. Six and 11 is good. But then all of a sudden now what happens you get 18 or 19 or 20? Either A, you're having to make cuts. Or B, you can then assign some subs to the varsity and the rest of the subs to JV. So there's a lot of flexibility within our our stuff to allow you to to not have as many to not have a ton of cuts. A lot of these games, you're not going to get you know an amazing amount of students. I, I get a lot of Overwatch simply because of the success that we've had, and for whatever reason, in in my area, that's like the one that's incredibly popular. But just in my town, um, but you know, other schools have multiple Rocket League teams or just have more league players than they know what to do with. It, it varies from game to game and place to place. A lot of that information is going to come from your preseason interest form. Hype that up some more. So um, all, all of that being said, you guys can see the numbers. It's usually one less. But for Overwatch, League Legend, and Valorant, it's one varsity team. And then JV, we're allowing, I would imagine, we you know, two. exactly, two, two, two JV teams on those just because we want to get more people in. And JV doesn't have a, a state tournament or it's just a bracket. They play or they have a, a Swiss season and that's it. There's no end of the season tournament bracket. There's no state championship for JV anymore. It's just varsity only. So you're putting one varsity in four, team fourth and then the, the multiple um, JV teams. For for Rocket League and Fortnite, well, Rocket, League's little, Rocket League will also have, I think, I think we allow because it's two only varsity, three players. It's three two JV. varsity, yeah, two varsity and three JV. Fortnite, you could talk about that. Fortnite, it will be uh, five trios, up to five trios allowed. Each of those trios will be allowed to have two subs. There is not a JV for Fortnite, um, and so that's the one where what fifteen and I don't know, math is hard. Twenty-five people <laughs> maximum for yeah. Fortnite, um, and you can't submit more than that. And so that one, you know, and we could go into the woods about all the things that could happen. But the biggest overarching piece of advice I can give is uh, don't reinvent the wheel on this, especially if this is a game you're not familiar with. The IHSCA staff, other coaches are all extremely approachable. If you have a Fortnite thing and you know, oh, Coach McGee said he has a lot of Fortnite experience, send me a message on Discord. Say, hey, I have 35 Fortnite kids and I don't know what to do. I'll talk to you. Coach Turp, we'll talk to you about Overwatch. Well, we're happy to help. So don't reinvent the wheel. Reach out to someone that you know, someone you trust, or someone you just recognize has had success in that game, especially if it's one you're not as familiar with, and they'll be more than happy to help you guys out. Yep. I will say, for example, for some of these games, um, I feel that the best way to, for at least in my experience, to run trials is to literally run a practice, or if you've got enough kids, just have two teams play each other. Yep. Um, from For my Overwatch, I usually have my varsity players, my, my last team varsity players, will scrim with one or two JV or JV interested players or whatever it is. And they, they, they practice a couple times and I'm able to watch that um, during the tryouts. Cause I'm, again, the one part, uh, you know, the one thing we didn't mention is in a lot of these games, they have a, a pre-built in system for rankings. If you play competitively already, which we encourage our players to do because it really, the, some of them, yeah, there's sometimes they're a little broken or whatever the case is, but it's a system that's already in place. So like you said, don't reinvent the wheel. If, if if these these games have rankings already in them, you know, with Rocket League, you know, whatever it is, you know, Grand Champ, Champ stuff like that, you know, it's already built in there. You play the you can encourage your players to pl play competitively. That gives you at least a baseline of data to start with. Then you can go, okay, how well is their communication? How well are they open to coaching? You know, what are their skill skill set in, in far as in the game goes? But a lot of that gets displayed through their their pre ranking already that you've got. So 
you know, I already know, like, my, my varsity Overwatch, like, uh, you know, yes, we go through a, a tryout system to make sure that we're, everything's still viable. And I've told my varsity players, hey, you know, you got to prove that you're good, that nobody is safe. But at the same point, like, I already know, you know, these kids are, are, are highly ranked and they've won state champions. You know, you're not just going to be like, well, you have to try out, you know, you got to do everything. Or I make them practice with my lower level ones to then figure out, hey, how are my tryouts going to go? But same thing for Valorant, League of Legends, Rocket League. Get some scrims, get some practices, make them. T- I think uh, Coach McGee said, look, if I got 12 Overwatch, I'm just having them play each other. You know, 6v6 go. Mix up the teams, you know, so you can see some different combinations. Listen to their comms. That's huge. Sometimes I turn off the game. I don't even watch the game. I just want to listen to the communication. Or I'll close my eyes and just listen to see as I'm picking out the voices of who's doing what is necessary in the game. And particularly um, for Fortnite, that same strategy has helped me weed out a lot of would-be bad teammates uh, because we all know the Fortnite brand of toxicity uh, that is fun to deal with and everybody thinks that they're the best Fortnite player in the world. Yep. You turn off that game and just listen to how they treat each other, you'll know who your team is. Exactly. So I will say, you know, we're not going to go too much more in-depth into each individual game. And I know if that's what you're here for, we, we had to like over do like an overview of how we're looking at tryouts. But please, please, please reach out to us, especially if it's a game that we're both familiar with. So... Uh, again, Coach McGee is more Fortnite. I am definitely Overwatch. Um, a little bit, um, not so much. I, Valorant has a similar skill set to, to Overwatch, so it kind of follows in that same context um, and things. But we could definitely hook you uh, hook you up with um, whatever game it is that you're, you're looking for. We definitely have a, a good uh, conglomerate of coaches across the state that have done well in all these games. So um, reach out for specific game tryout information if you're looking for that. Um, that is because it, it, it we could literally probably spend another 45 minutes on each of these and how to conduct just that specific game. It, it, yeah. it can get that in depth. So I know if, if you were looking for that kind of information, we we're unable to give that to you today. Please go ahead and take that next step and reach out to us or the IHSDA. We'd be happy to hook you up with whoever you got. I think we got what one or two more slides here. Yep, one more yeah, slide. There we go. Yeah, Good. One more slide, and we're, we're going to start with the story that Coach Rakowski said, said he's only coming to this presentation to hear the story. <laughs> But when I mentioned that I do theater, when I was in high school, I went to Riverton High School, a little small town here outside of Springfield, and uh, it was a, we had a great musical program. For whatever reason, this tiny school did, I was always involved. And I remember my sophomore year, we did Chicago. And uh, I became aware this year that when the tryouts have been happening and they do callbacks, that the directing staff, which was our choir director, English teacher, anatomy teacher, and uh, another English teacher, um, they would take seventh hour off they would take the last class period of the day off. The principals all knew this was going to happen. They would go to where they post the cast list and post it, and then they would go hide. It would sometimes be in a janitor's closet. It was in the cafeteria, like in the back in the kitchen in the cafeteria one year. It was under the stairs in the in the bleachers uh, in the gym one year. I always found a weird spot in the school to go hide, hang out, talk to each other, just chill, so no student could find them. And their rule was, you're going to see this cast list, Some of you are going to be jubilation. Some of you are going to be extremely upset, right? You have all weekend to feel those feelings, to honor those feelings, and then to come back Monday ready to be part of the greater good. And and they, you know, they say, uh, we'll talk to you. Uh, But back to the slide we had earlier where, you know, we're not going to be badgered about decisions. We'll tell you why we made it. We're going to say that's that. And when that was the decision, we're going to move on. Uh, But I tell the story because uh, my sophomore year when I wasn't Billy Flynn, and I was Fred Casely instead and about to die in the first scene of the musical. Um, I was upset and I was like, I'm going to find the hiding spot this year. I'm going to talk to them. They need to hear why this is a mistake. And I walked around the school and I did not find them. And uh, I think that their wisdom in hiding is sort of something I like to tell with tryouts because now I do the same thing. I carry that tradition with esports. Uh, once I post that list, they won't hear from me that weekend. They won't hear from me for a couple of days. Let them feel the feelings they're going to feel. Let them have that. they honor those, uh, and then have a real conversation with them. But make sure they know this is the decision that's been made. Choose to be the part of the greater good and and make the best of the situation that you have in your mind because that's what life's about. This is real life goals. This is twenty first century skills, uh, and it's things that we can teach to them. So uh, I I you know I say hey post the cast list and then go hide everybody. That's a great point. Um, mine is I got a little bit more of an automated system. So I have an, uh, basically email templates that go out um, where uh, I do have a roster that gets posted, but then I make sure I, I'm individually contacting them. I feel like the individual touch is sometimes kind of nice where I'll have a template made up and it'll be congratulations. You've made the team and, and, and that's pretty much it. And then I have ones that obviously will say that you were not selected. Um, so I've got ones that, that, that obviously then also say JV. 
but then ones that if you didn't make the competitive team, I always leave like an empty blank and I always put like reasons why. And what I do is I collect, I have notes upon notes upon notes and I, I, my Google Drive is a mess because of it. But the idea is I got all these notes for my tryouts and I always try to take for every thing I didn't like or that didn't work out, that didn't go in the student's favor, I always want to at least give at least one thing I did. So I said, you know, um, I, you know, you, were, you weren't able to make it. Here's what I saw that was great, and I want you to keep that up. And then here's what I saw that can be improved upon for future trials for future season. But I always reiterate in those emails, messages, like, one, don't don't give up. Don't stop. We're going to have community events, that, that safety net we talked about earlier. Don't let that student go. Um, you want them to still be involved in the club. Maybe uh, they'd be interested in subbing in on some of those practices. If we didn't have enough players, hey, they can come and sub at least. Still have some involvement um, with that kind of thing. I've had it where, hey, would you like to be a manager instead? Um, now, I know it's a little bit different with esports because you're not you're online versus like on a field or something like that. But there's still managerial duties that would be awesome that I could hand off to a student that I don't have to worry about, you know, when it comes to certain things, um, especially in the lab. Uh, kind Grab of situation. those AP stats, kids, and let them do statistical analyses of your awesome. team's data. Got, got to love that kind of stuff, right? Let them yep. Work those brains out. Um, but I am at the end of all of those emails that I send out, at least the messages that I put forth, is I, I, I say if there's any issues or you want to have any sort of discussion, first off, I make myself available. But like Coach McGee said, it's I make myself available in person. I ask that they do not respond to the email, that they come and talk to me in person. And then, yeah, so it's usually sent out, you know, if I have it on a Saturday, I'm going to, like, the last tryouts on Saturday, I make my mind up. I get the results of the tryout that day because they're going to try out and they want to know right away. So I get the results out on a Saturday that leaves them Sunday, and then I can talk to them on Monday at the school. So I just make sure that they understand it's always an in-person review for that stuff. For you in particular, how much you explain your choices is going to, again, kind of your feel your own club. It's something that I've done for a few years now where I reach out and I, I make sure that they know exactly why I, you know, some people are like, you didn't make it, sorry. And then they're left wanting to know, right? I put that a little bit of information. If it's not something that you think would be a good fit for your club, or maybe the student uh, wouldn't benefit from that, then, then I, you know, I can, I can support not giving out that information. But I think sometimes being open and honest goes a long way, especially with these types of students that we're dealing with. Yeah. I think also you need to make sure you're gauging your comfort level with that game and making that decision, right? Particularly, I mean, I keep going back to Fortnite, but that's, it just seems to be the problem child uh, of the program sometimes where uh, they all think they're so good. God's and, gift. Yep. And, and they, I mean, they just do. And then, you know, they run into academic and an IHSEA match and quickly get humbled. And so if you, if you know Fortnite really well, you are more inclined to say, well, during this build fight, this happened during this engagement, this happened. But if you don't know that game, like Coach Troop said, you may you may want to say I, I chose you because of this. Don't. Yeah, it, just kind of scale that back. Yeah, particularly with games where egos are so heavily involved. Um, the less team based games, Smash and Fortnite in particular, um, you may just want to stick to your guns and say this, it's a decision the staff went with. Um, here are the opportunities we still have. We still need to be involved in the story. So just make sure that you feel comfortable with your choice. Don't feel like you are obligated to say nothing or say everything. Uh, make sure it's personally what's best for you. Yep. Well, everyone, it brings us to 215 right on the nose. Um, so thank you very much for coming out. There's our contact information again. Feel free to hit us up. Most of the time, uh, Coach McGee and I are available. Our, the best way to reach us is either email and or Discord. I prefer Discord just because that, that hits all of my devices. Um, but every, everything is there. So we hope you guys enjoyed this uh, session, that you got something out of it. Please, if you have game-specific questions, please go ahead and do a follow-up. We'd be happy to, to do any of that or put you in contact with someone that can. But on behalf of Coach McGee, thanks for coming. We appreciate it. Yeah, awesome. Thank you, guys. I'll stick around for a minute here if yep. anybody wants to add any extra questions in. Uh, but otherwise, other sessions are going on. So yes, enjoy go, them. Go. And, and I'm going to plug my 3 o'clock about the club and why it matters. Because we started to talk about that, and I kept thinking, stop. You're going to say this in a <laughs> half hour. Just stop. It's all so. good. Good stuff. Well, yeah, so anything you guys want to jump in the chat? There we go. Awesome. Awesome. Thank thanks, you, Stephen. Steven. Appreciate Yeah. I guess the delay is all. Is, there, is the delay gone now? Because there was like no, a, it's still about, but it's only ten seconds. Or okay, so. that's not so bad. Because like when yeah. Rack said, you know, when you had mentioned the why he was here, and he said true so fast, I was like, oh, the, the delay seems to be gone. So, uh, I'm excited for this season, Coach McGee. I think uh, everybody is. I think the students are. Um, it's going to be the the Church McGee Turk McGee show for a I little know. bit here. So we'll see what at least in the fall, and then we'll see what else we can get our hands on. But. Also, I'm, I need to stop. I need to stop trying to brand myself as the Fortnite guy. I don't want to be known as the Fortnite guy. <laughs> I was like, up. my, my sure, love is sure Overwatch. coming out that way. I know sure. my love is Overwatch, but I keep bringing Fortnite up because 
that's where I learned hard lessons the yeah. most. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, and I think for this conversation, that was what was important, right? Is 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 getting that out there. Um, awesome. what we're well, most 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 skilled with. So I see no more questions. So we're gonna hop out of here, guys. Thank you so much, and see you later on in the day.